Salt and Light YouTube channel. Um, I am super excited that you are here and you chose to click on this video. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. Um, my comments are always open. My DMs are always open. You can check out my Instagram. It will be linked in the description. Um, and yeah, so I'm super excited about today's video. I'm going to be talking about Joseph's story. And I just finished the book of Genesis today. And so going through Joseph's story, which is chapters 37 till 50, um, I just had the songs from the musical Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat stuck in my head this past week. Um, love the music. I encourage you to check it out. It helps to really remember the story. Anyways, so his story, something I didn't realize it before until actually reading through it, um, it shows that when we submit to the Lord's will and... Um, when we say your will is better than mine and you you have a better plan for my life than I could ever think of for myself It just shows how much we'll be blessed through that and it really proves that God's will is way better than ours um, It's better than we could ever imagine So to give a little bit of context the last video in this series was about Abraham and Sarah So Abraham and Sarah had a son Isaac and then Isaac had Jacob and Esau and Jacob gave birth to 12 sons um, or he had 12 sons through four different wives. So his wife, Rachel, which that was his favorite wife, um, gave birth to two sons, Joseph and Benjamin. And Joseph was the first one. Um, and so Joseph was Jacob's favorite son. And there, we see a little bit of favoritism with, um, Isaac and Rebecca and they favored it. They each had a favorite child. And so we see how that causes conflict. Um, However, so Jacob favorited Joseph and he showed him more care and favor over the other brothers and he made him this ornate robe or this colored coat. Um, and all of the other brothers were super jealous and like, what the heck? Like, why does, what did Joseph do to deserve our father's love more than we, we did? And um, they were shepherds and so they worked in the fields and they worked for their father. And so one day Joseph had a dream he had two separate dreams. The first one was about, um, they all had like, what are, like sheaths of grain and all the brothers grain were bowing down to his grain. The brothers like, what the heck, Joseph? Like, why are you having dreams about us bowing down to you? And this is not bowing down in worship. It's just bowing down in like honor and like respect. Um, not like worshiping him as if he was God. And the other dream was about Joseph. All the brothers were represented as stars and Jacob was the sun, and then his mother, Rachel, was the moon. And so the moon and the stars were all bowing down to Joseph's star. So he had two separate dreams about them all bowing down to him. And that just made the brothers really jealous and really angry. And um, so one day, they were going to kill him, um, but their brother Reuben was like, no, we shouldn't kill him. Let's just throw him in this empty well over here. So they threw him in the well, and then these Ishmaelites, which the Ishmaelites were descendants of Abraham's son Ishmael the son before Joseph which he had him by um, Sarah's maid Hagar so that was a whole adulterous incident um, so anyways that's a little bit ironic so the Ishmaelites come and Judah who he's like the fourth I believe son uh, he's like let's sell him to him let's sell him as a slave and get some money so they sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 shekels of silver, and then they ripped up his coat, they put goat's blood on it, and they said, we, like Jacob died, or Joseph died. They said that to their father, Jacob. Um, and so Jacob is really distraught. He's mourning the death of his favorite son. Um, it's terrible. So Joseph is, at this time, he's 17. So he's a 17-year-old kid, and he's like, he's hated by his brothers he's thrown into a well he's sold into slavery now he's like a slave to the ishmaelites the ishmaelites then um sell him to the egyptians so now he's in egypt um and his family's in canaan which is that's in mesopotamia um so he goes all the way down to egypt and that's where he's living and this was probably not the plan that he had for his life um he didn't necessarily choose to be the favorite son um and we don't know much about his character and if how innocent he was or if he mocked his brothers or what he was like. However, we know that his plan for his life wasn't to be sold into slavery um, to the Ishmaelites and then to the Egyptians. 
And so that's a huge thing in itself. Like one day you're just like, you're, all your 11 brothers hate you and they sit, sell you away. Um, so that is like the, the big main first part. Um, life did not go as planned. And oftentimes our lives do not go as we plan. It may not be as drastic as being sold into slavery. Um, but the plan that we have for our lives is oftentimes not the plan that God has and oftentimes not the plan that's going to be best for our lives. And God's going to use the circumstances even, well, definitely if they are hard and trials, um, he's going to use those to grow us and to strengthen us and to use those for his purposes. And we'll see how that, um, how that worked for the good of other people uh, soon. Okay. So chapter 39, this is Joseph is um, now a servant of Potiphar, who he is one of the officials of Pharaoh. And Pharaoh is like the king of Egypt. Um, yes. So <laughs> chapter 39, verse 2 um, says, The Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered, and he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him and that everything, and that the Lord gave him his... Uh, I'm sorry, and that the Lord gave him success in everything he did. Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. So he's promoted because he sees that Joseph has the Lord and he has the strength of the Lord. And we can see that Joseph is obeying the Lord um, and sh showing godly character, which is being responsible and trustworthy and respectful and um, a hard worker. He's promoted. Um, Potiphar put him in charge of his household and he entrusted to his care everything he owned. From the time he put him in charge of his household and of all that he owned, the Lord blessed the household of the Egyptians because of Joseph. The blessing of the Lord was on everything Potiphar had, both in the house and in the field. So Potiphar left everything he had in Joseph's care with Joseph in charge. He did not concern himself with anything except the food that he ate. So already the Lord is showing favor and is blessing Joseph um, for his character and is blessing the other people who live in Potiphar's household because of Joseph. Um, and so that's just something that the Lord is already working in Joseph's life and he's not just abandoned, um, and alone, but the Lord is with him in everything that he's doing and he's there guiding him. Um, and Joseph's not alone. So in times that we go through hard trials that we feel like we're alone, we're not alone and we will never be alone. Um, okay. So then Joseph was handsome. He was, um, well built, it says, and he, He's a great worker. And so Potiphar's wife is like, hmm, I like this kid. And she's evil and gross. And she every day tries to get Joseph to commit adultery with her. And every time he's like, no, like, I'm not going to do that. Um, he keeps refusing because he knows that what he knows that what that will do to him. And he knows how that would be betraying his master. And then also in um, verse nine, he says, how could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? So he has not, he, this is showing that he is still trying to obey the Lord and still trying to live a life for the Lord, even though he's in this circumstance that is not necessarily what he would have wanted for himself to be living in Egypt and not with his family. Um, so he kept refusing, which that's also showing um, sexual purity and it, he has integrity and he's not tempted by her. He is strong enough in his character and in his faith to tell her no and he's not going to do something like that. So eventually she, um, he said no for the last time. And then she like deceitfully turned the situation around and made it seem like Joseph was trying to get in bed with her. And so that caused him to go into jail because she was angry with him for trying to commit because he didn't want to commit adultery with her. So now he's put in prison for something that he didn't do. And that's also like terrible. Um, uh, I'm sorry. Genesis 39, chapter 20. Joseph's master took him and put him in prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined. But while Joseph was there in prison, the Lord was with him, and he showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. So the warden put Joseph in charge of all those held in prison, and he was made responsible for all that was done there. The warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. The Lord still has not forsaken Joseph and Joseph is still with the Lord and he is still showing responsibility in his, his trustworthy character in prison. Um, he did not forsake all his morals or his trying to pursue the Lord. And he is still showing that integrity in prison and the Lord is continuing to bless him. And this is probably, again, not what Joseph wanted for his life to 
be put into slavery away from his family in Egypt and now in prison. So chapter 40, there are these two men that are in prison with him. One was a cupbearer to Pharaoh and a cupbearer essentially is they taste all the wine that the Pharaoh drinks to make sure it's not poisoned. Um, and then the baker, which they were a baker for Pharaoh. So Joseph noticed that they were like downcast and sad and which again shows that he has compassion on people and he has a kindness to even notice and care about what they're feeling. So chapter 40, verse 6, when Joseph came to them the next morning, he saw that they were dejected. So he asked for his officials who were in custody with him in his master's house, why do you look so sad today? We both had dreams, they answered, but there's no one to interpret them. Then Joseph said, do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me your dreams. Again, he's giving the glory to God and he's not going to take it on his own account and trying to interpret them himself. Um, and with the Lord, with because of the Lord speaking through him, he's able to interpret the dreams. He interprets the dreams. Um, the cupbearer goes back into service to Pharaoh and then the baker is executed. Pharaoh then has some dreams and um, the cupbearer remembers Joseph and says, oh, there's this guy who interpreted my dreams in prison. Like, ask him because none of the magicians or sorcerers or um, people like that in Egypt could understand or interpret um, what Pharaoh's dreams were. So... Pharaoh calls Joseph in, in uh, chapter 41, verse 16, um, he's like, can you please interpret my dreams for me? I cannot do it, Joseph replied to Pharaoh, but God will give Pharaoh the answer he desires. He's not taking the glory for himself. He knows that he's not the one who can, can interpret the dreams, but that it's the Lord who can interpret the dreams. So again, he interprets Pharaoh's dreams through, because of the Lord. Um, Egypt's going to have seven years of abundant, um, what's the word, abundant, produce and they're going to be really abundant in their farming and they're going to have lots of crops like surplus of crops and then they're going to have seven years of a really severe famine and so because of joseph and because of his um integrity and his character and his obedience to the lord pharaoh chooses him to be in charge of um making sure that they collect enough grain and food during the seven years of abundance so that they have they can survive for the seven years of famine um so Joseph is put underneath, just underneath Pharaoh, but he's above everyone else in all of Egypt. So then Joseph's brothers come to Egypt to get food because there's a, there's, the famine is in Canaan and so, um, in Egypt, it's across the whole land. And so they come to food. Joseph recognizes them, but they don't recognize Joseph. Then Joseph puts them through a couple different character tests, um, which are, they were a little bit harsh, but also just to see like, where his brother's hearts were at and are they still the same as they were or have they changed? All of the character tests prove that his brothers have changed um, and that their hearts are softened and that they, he can overhear them talking about how they do feel guilty um, about what they did to Joseph. And so after all those tests and they, um, they have to go back to Canaan to get Benjamin and they come back and because um, Benjamin and Joseph are full brothers and Joseph and all of his other brothers, they're all half brothers. Um, so then in chapter 45, verse 4, Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come close to me. When they had done so, he said, I am your brother Joseph, the one you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for sending me here, because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. For two years now there has been a famine in the land, and for the next five years there will be no plowing and reaping. But God sent me ahead of you to preserve you a remnant on earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance so then it was not you who sent me here but god he made me father to pharaoh lord of his entire household and ruler of all egypt so he's recognizing that this is the lord's will and god who sent me here and he spent 13 years in prison before he got to interpret pharaoh's dreams so he's in slavery he's serving potiphar he's put in prison for 13 years for something he didn't do and then now he's forgiving his brothers and he's showing them this it's the Lord's will who sent me here. And he sent me here so that he, and because Joseph was there, he saved so many lives because of the Lord being able to work through him to collect the abundance of crops and to interpret Pharaoh's dreams. Um, so this just shows like when we take a step back to kind of see how the Lord is working in our lives, he is working and through the terrible trials of our lives and through everything that we go through, he is only going to use it for his purposes and his glory and to bless us through that. And the blessing might not seem, might not be 
like we live in a really great house and we have a lot of money and we have the best job we have the best people around us but just blessing us through the fact that we can bring glory to him which is our purpose um and bringing other people to the lord that is amazing and so through the trials that we go to if it can help bring other people to the lord and save other people and bring them um the good news of jesus christ like how worth it is that and it should be super worth it for us to just submit to the lord's plan because he has something in mind way better than we could ever imagine for ourselves um and so jacob then he comes to egypt and he's overjoyed that his son is alive um they the family reunites joseph provides for his family and um through this pharaoh is super compassionate towards um jacob and his family and he, they get the best land um, near Egypt. And um, Jacob blesses all of his sons before he dies. And he dies at age 147. Um, and then Joseph's brothers are like are concerned that now that their father's gone, Joseph is going to do his revenge now. However, in chapter 50, verse 19, it says, But Joseph said to them, Don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good, to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So then don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. And before he died, um, he reassured his brothers twice by saying, But God will surely come to your aid. Um, and so I think the story of Joseph is a super, super encouraging one um just in that whatever happens to us we know that the lord will never leave us the lord never left joseph's side and he was with him the entire time um and joseph prospered because of the lord not because of his own plan but because of what the lord was doing through him and he saved so many lives um because of the lord's work in his life and because of his obedience because of his integrity because of his strong trustworthy character um so I think just as an encouragement to you guys to learn from these stories of real people, like Joseph was a real person, to learn the stories from real people in the Bible um, and to put that in the context of your own life. How can your character be in full submission to the Lord's will and his plan for your life? And how can you bless other people with what the Lord has, been, what the Lord has given you, um, your gifts and your talents and um, your character? And so I really love the story of Joseph. And so I really wanted to share that with you guys today. Um, again, if you liked it, please like this video, um, subscribe. And any if you have any comments, questions, concerns, I would love to hear. Um, I'm super thankful for all of you. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.